Good evening from the south of Israel. We're back with another shiur and Likute Moran. This evening, prepared a special shiur. This is part two of Azamra, one of Rabbi Nachman's most classic teachings. But what we're doing, we're going to review last week and capsulize it. So then we'll have the whole Torah of Azamra together with tonight's shiur on one, one recording and Bol Hashem, whenever you need it, it's a first aid. It's a first aid pill. You can use it wherever you want. Just as we heard in the intro, that beautiful nigun, that beautiful melody that's called Adir Ayum. And that melody is a, something that Breslov Rechassidim we sing every Saturday night, every Motzei Shabbat at Melava Malka. But this week in Azamra, Be'ezrat Hashem, we're going to learn that each point, each good point within you, each mitzvah and every deed, every good thing you do in heaven, it creates a musical note. And all your good deeds, they come together. All your good points come together and they bring a, a beautiful melody. And this is your own melody. This is the melody of your soul. And this is the melody that the angels sing to Hashem. Okay, this is here. This is Fumani's melody. This is Julia's melody. This is Eric's melody. This is Menachem's melody. It's, you can understand the gratification of all your good things. So if you cause so much gratification to Hashem, why are you down on yourself? I'm not good, I'm not this, I'm not this one's better than me. But we're not competing with anyone. This life is not a competitive sport. People make it a competitive sport, but it's not like that. We're only competing with ourselves and against our own evil inclination. So we're going to create tonight our own exquisite nigunim, our own beautiful melodies. And last week, we learned that we have to look for the good points in everyone. And even a person that seems to be a complete sinner, somebody looks like you, a bad person, evil person, no such thing. By finding a single good point in every every single person, and especially a person that's not exactly an upright person, we uplift that person because when we find that good point and we focus on that good point, that particular person is uplifted to a higher spiritual rung. At a higher spiritual rung, that person has the privilege of doing tshuva. It, it's allowed that his heart is opened up. His heart is opened up and he can, he can repent. So... By finding good points in other people, we find areas where they're not sinners and we're even upright. Uh, there's no such thing as a person that's totally evil, that's totally wicked, no such thing, unless he or she adopts an ideology of evil. Okay, this is the one thing that the, the one uh, clarification we have to make when we look for the good to judge in people. If there is a person that adopts the ideology of a tyrant, Adopts the ideology to throw people in gas chambers. Adopts the ideology that uh, I think we see the, the whole world talking. I don't know why the world is quiet. There's so much evil going on. Nobody says anything about uh, Darfur. Nobody says anything about Sudan. So, there's evil in the world. No, we don't, these kind of tyrants, these kind of people that do such things, no, or kill other people just because of what their race or creed is. No way. This, we're not talking about these people. We're talking about a person that uh, you see a person person doesn't keep a certain commandment, a person does upright, maybe uh, the person is even a convicted criminal, uh, steals, then maybe look at it, maybe maybe the person that steals was, uh, didn't have money, was stealing to, to feed his family, don't know all kinds of extre extreme circumstances, but we still look for the good points, so look for the good points, and, and this is what, uh, we learn this in, in the Gemara, uh, one of our sages will tell you the other, they must find the good points in everything, they walk in the street, they saw a dead dog, he says, well, what can you find good in a dead dog? He says, look how white its teeth are. When we have a positive outcome, like a positive out outlook on life, we can find good in anything. We just have to look for it. So uh, just say, that, dude, look at this, 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 the head of the mafia. What is it? The guy is so kind to his mother. <laughs> every, before every day, he brings flowers to his mother. He, he, he's so kind to his mother. So this is one of the Ten Commandments. So we look in the area of honoring parents the head of the mafia, he's a tzaddik. So when we look at him like a tzaddik and Shemaim in the heavenly court, he's uplifted like a tzaddik and he's actually lived. He says, well, maybe I should uh, clean up my act. Maybe I should change my ways. And so we actually uplift people. This is one of the greatest outreaches that you could do for uh, out, you could do for another person is by looking at that person's good points. So there is no such thing as an individual that's devoid of good. Everyone has merit. And everyone has done some form of mitzvah, even if they don't know about it. Uh, so it's like, suppose you see somebody, this person's got 98 bad qualities. 
He's got one little good quality. Like you said, the head of the mafia that, that honors his mother, respects his father. That's a little pilot light. Okay, that's one of the Ten Commandments. He honors his parents. So that little pilot light, uh, you can fan it. You could turn up the gas. You could turn it up and go bigger and bigger and bigger by judging that person fairly and finding that person's additional good points and delving on the good point he has, even if we can't find additional good points. But say, hey, listen, I should respect my parents the way this guy respects his parents. Okay, and we build up his, his value and he's uplifted to a higher spiritual rung. And that is a tremendous, uh, tr tremendous form of outreach because you're bringing another person closer to Hashem. So when we judge people fairly, it's a mitzvah, the Torah. It's one of the 613 mitzvahs, but Tzedek Tishpot Amitecha. Rabbi Nachman is, is elaborating on it. Rabbi Nachman always says he never brought a nuance. He's only elaborating on things he wants us to understand better, principles that are in, in the Gemara and religious law and, 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 and the, in the Torah. So as we judge other people fairly and find the good points within them, their positive areas actually uplift them. There were these atheists in the Ukrainian government, and they were terrible. They were they were they would rat on on their their fellow Jews, their Jewish atheists. Is that Rabbi Nachman? He, instead of said, condemning them and said that uh, they didn't like they didn't like the the Torah scholars because they think the Torah scholars have no worldly knowledge. So Rebbe Nachman asked him, he said, do you guys know how to pay, play chess? He said, yeah, we love to play chess. We're champions in chess. He says, come to my office. They, they, they came They came to play Rebbe, Rebbe Nachman. We, 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 they, they couldn't believe that Rebbe Nachman wiped them off in chess. Rebbe Nachman says, uh, uh, do you people learn physics, learn chemistry? They were amazed. Everything you talk about science is Rebbe Nachman no more. Everything there. And so Rebbe, Rebbe Nachman did. He uplifted them. And actually turn them completely around. They could play completely loyal and completely observant. So just as the Torah obligates us to judge other people fairly, we're in line also. We have to judge ourselves fairly as well. A person cannot possibly be happy if he can't or she can't see the good points within themselves. Remember this. This is why tonight's lesson is the key to happiness. If you can't find your good points, and some people think that's arrogant. You think good, good about yourself. No, that's survival. That's not arrogance. That's survival. It's just like a, a soldier. How can a soldier fight a battle where he doesn't know that he's got a rifle, he's got an M M4 carbine, he's got a commando knife, he's got a grenade. You have to know these are your weapons, your good points are your weapons of survival, of surviving the evil inclination. Because your good points, hey, yeah, I am a worthy person. Yes, Hashem had a reason for creating me. Hashem brought me to the world so I could do the things that Hashem taught me how to do, that Hashem gave me the talents and aptitudes. You don't attribute to myself. I'm the big man on the campus. No, Hashem gave me these gifts. Okay. And this, but look at these gifts. Because when a person is down on themselves, he's making a terrible statement. He's saying that the creator is faulty. The creator makes messed up people. And that's when he looks at someone else and says, as a person is, is not capable or a person is not worthy. It's also a statement about the creator. The creator is perfect. The creator creates every single one of us to do his or her mission on earth. It's easy to understand. An ant has its mission on earth and a giraffe has its mission on earth, but nobody expects an ant to be the size of a giraffe and nobody expects a giraffe to go into a little ant hill. That they can't do everyone. Every creation has its own purpose. Every flower adds the beauty to the world, adds oxygen to the air. Every single blade of grass and photosynthesis, it's all, it's all a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful plant that each one of us is part of Hashem's beautiful scheme of creation. And start looking at yourself. I'm good. I am beautiful. What's beautiful? I'm beautiful when I do what Hashem intends me to do. When I take my talents and my qualities that Hashem gave me and I put them to good use, put them to, to make the world a better place, to make myself a better person. Okay, so people that aren't happy with themselves can't be happy with others. So we say to people, they're not happy with themselves. So what do they do? People are not happy with themselves. They trample other people because they don't feel good about themselves. So by trampling other people and stepping down on them, they feel, oh, they're higher than them. They look at the fault, for the fault in other people. These are people that are miserable, that they're, they're very, very unhappy. Okay, so a person that's happy with himself never tramples on anybody, never insults anybody. What's that, that, that insult them? That the person, you, you look at you look at another person that I've got my mission on earth. He or she has their mission on earth. Okay, everybody's fine. So yeah, what happened? Oh, but the, it's not so easy. 
because the evil inclination doesn't let us off the hook. The evil inclination looks okay. Look at your good person. You look at your good points. You know something? I said four Psalms today. I said four Psalms today. Ah, the evil coach says, what do you mean your Psalms? You think Hashem cares about your Psalms? While you were reading your Psalms, you thought about work. You thought about the electric bill. You thought about this client that you wanted to close a, a thing. You thought about all kinds of things. You didn't think about Hashem. So even the evil inclination says, oh, it, it's messed up. You're messed up. Even your mitzvahs are messed up. This is evil inclination. Anything you good in yourself, why is it called evil inclination? Because he puts evil thoughts. He poisons the will. Anything you want to think good about yourself right away, there he is. There he is. So, okay. So evil inclination says, oh, your psalm's no good. You know something? From the four psalms you said, do you remember one word? One word you said Hashem. And one word you said Hashem. And one word you spoke to Hashem. What, do you know what a tremendous thing what, that, that lights up the whole heavens? When a little human on earth, why does Shem create us? We are the lowest realm in all of creation, the lowest spiritual realm. All of creation knows about Hashem. Here, Shem's light is hidden because Hashem wants us to find him. And most people, they don't bother. They're lazy. They don't look for Hashem. But most people, well, they just they don't look. But you look for Hashem. You call that Hashem. You said, Hashem? Oh, maybe as I said, I said Psalms 53, 54, 55, 56. But I remember Hashem. Listen to me, Hashem, hear my voice. Ah, Hashem, hear my voice. Wow, that's four tremendous mitzvot that maybe you came to the world just to say these four words. Let's look at all the millions of people that they don't have Hashem, all the tens of millions of people. And here you call that Hashem's name. So no matter what the evil inclination does, we could do an Aikido on him, turn him right around, it's like in a wrestling match when you you, you grab the, the, the guy into the crook of the arm. He's about to pin you. Whoop, you turn him right over. This is what we do the evil inclination. We turn him right over and he's on his back. He's on his back. Now it's, that, now it's his problem. Okay, that's when you soon as you look at the good point and you don't listen to the evil inclination, look at the, no matter what he's saying, no matter what he is saying. He goes, so even if we, we see ourselves as blemished, we look for the good within the blemish. That's like what... The prayer where your mind wandered, but you did say a few good words, a few good words with intent. That's fantastic. This is Rebbe Nachman's, Rebbe Nachman's advice. Rebbe Nachman says that when you're, uh, you're, when you're praying and the evil inclination is on your back, you just grab one or two words and say them with all your might, with all your intent. This is like something in, in uh, Krav Maga. Krav Maga, they said, what do you do if 12 people jump on your back? You can't even know if you're as great as you are to fight off 12 people. That's only in the movies. Okay, but 12 people? Okay, you take one and send him in the kingdom come. One and just hold on to him, the other will run away. This is what we do with the evil inclination. We take that one word, we take that one mitzvah. He says, we're all messed up. No, one mitzvah I'm going to do. I'm going to go and I see that little old man struggling with his groceries. I'm going to help him cross the street with that grocery bag. I'm going to say, where do you live, sir? Right here, I'm going to wall him up the stairs. Finish. The evil collision can't touch you. It's such an act of loving kindness. You didn't know the little old man, but you helped him. <laughs> you helped him. You didn't know anything. This is the sanctification of Hashem's name. This is sanctification. Name. So by identifying our good, this arouses joy. There's no such thing that you helped that little old man cross the street and carried his groceries for him. And now he comes home and he thanks you and and he even wants to give you money or do something for you. Don't say no. That's fine. I don't. I don't sell my misvote. That's that's fine. They could. They, they don't have a price. Okay. I'm waiting for after 120 years. Okay. Just thank you and I say if you want to bless me, that's fine. So you get a blessing for the head. That blessing is going to. That's going to hold. So now you go and you walk back home. How do you feel? You feel fantastic, because there's no such thing where you do a good deed and you know you did a good deed, and you feel great about it. Feel great. So when you look at your good point, it arouses joy. And this is critical for spiritual and emotional survival. Okay, if every single psychotherapist would teach people to look for their good points and all kinds of theory and this, this is Rebbe Nachman was the master psychotherapist. And that's why uh, the, 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 the Amuna, this Amuna, this is, this is the greatest therapy. So each point within you, every mitzvah and every good deed you do, it's like a musical note. And these notes come together and they create exquisite melodies. 
oh, yeah, good point, this good point, this point. You don't pay attention to them, but they come together and you've got uh, your archive upstairs. There's a musical archive and the musical archive is in a very, very upper portal of heaven because music comes from a very hard portal of heaven. And that's why Rabbi Nachman writes in Discourse 3, we haven't learned that yet, but we'll, we'll, Bezat Hashem, we'll get there, that just as we eat kosher food, we have to have, we have and our ears have to be kosher. We can't hear unkosher things. It's not good for our ears to hear curse words, swear words, epithets. No. And for example, if you listen to acid rock, you get nervous. You listen to the type of melody that's a holy melody and just relax. It's relax. That's why I particularly put on that melody, Adir of Ayom Venoa, as, as, as we start today's lesson. So Rabbi Nachman explains that by singing or playing an instrument, this is a process of choosing the good from the bad. Because a, a good note, a good note, a harmonious note, is like good atmosphere. And a sour note is like bad atmosphere. So what does the singer or the musician do? They pick the good notes. This is like picking the good within the bad. And this is air purification. This is spiritual air purification. So your melody, it purifies the world. The melody that's created, this is azamra. The, the melody that's created, azamra means I shall sing. Okay. And that's up to now. Now we continue on with part two. And this is what Rabbi Nachman says. He quotes from, from Psalm 146, verse two. Azamra lelokai bodhi. He says, I, I will sing to Hashem while I am alive. And I sing to Hashem. I'm going to sing to Hashem. I'm going to sing to Hashem with the good points. That my good points will make notes and my notes will make a melody. And by this is looking for the good points within myself, looking for the good points of the other people. Now, what happens when those good points come together and make a melody? Then all of a sudden your heart is inclined to pray. Your heart is inclined to speak to Hashem. Because you have this melody. So your melody is already being played to Hashem. That's the background music. So sometimes, you know, can you imagine that uh, you have a fiancé and you're about to, but she's not yet your fiancé, you want to ask her to marry you, and you take her to some place, uh, uh, some restaurant, and you pay the maitre d' and give him a $20 tip and say, listen, I want you to put this Richard Kleiderman particular melody, soft melody in the background, and you get this melody going, the kind was a soft piano, and it's a soft piano, and you look at her, and you smile at her, and you say, Sweetheart, would you marry me? She's going to say yes. She's going to say yes. When your melody goes up to Shemaim and your melody goes and it goes before the heavenly throne, your soul clings to Hashem, clings, a bit of it, clings to Hashem like, like, like a bride and a groom. Your soul just clings at full of, like, your soul is clinging to Hashem. So down here on earth, all of a sudden your mouth, I want to praise Hashem. I want to talk to Hashem. And it is it's it's a whole new dimension. The people that they they pray, they pray, they pray because they have to pray. No, when you pray because you love Hashem, because you're clinging to Hashem, your soul is clinging to Hashem. And this, the Yetzir Hara, the evil inclination, doesn't want this. No, he doesn't want. So he's going to try everything to ruin it. So that's why you have to focus on the good points. Hold on to those good points and focus on them. And that's Azama. Azama means I shall sing. That our songs of praise to Hashem are created by the good points that we find within ourselves and the good points we find others. We do it for another person. We help another person create a melody. Now, Rabbi, Rabbi Nachman uses strong language. This is Rabbi Nathan wrote this down. He's here, Rabbeinu. We write this part of the Torah after Rabbi Nachman died. He says, Rabbi Nachman warned he warned, which is a warning, you know, don't, don't uh, stay, uh, stay out of the, uh, stay out of the, uh, don't dance in the middle of the street. No, he warned, Lelechani Matoz, that Rebbe Nachman warned that we have to go, it's for survival. It's like warning a soldier, you got to be careful, careful on the right, be careful of the minefields, be careful here, be careful of the ambush. Rebbe Nachman warned us to be careful to follow this Torah, Azamra, all our lives. This particular Torah. Because it is a tremendous foundation for anyone that wants to get close to Hashem. A person who won't, who won't lose his world, won't lose his world the next world. The people that are unhappy, they don't have this world. So what can they look for in the next world? If they're unhappy, they're not praying to Hashem. 
they're not learning Torah. It's a, they're they're unhappy. So they're not functioning in this world. They're not functioning in this world, not going to be much of a next world. Because you have an next world based on the good you've done in this world. So why? The reason a person is far away from Hashem because a person has a melancholy and depression. And why is a person depressed, says Rabbi Nachman? Because he thinks, he or she thinks that there's no good within them. Because if you, have you ever seen a champion athlete that's depressed? On a winner, <laughs> you won. No, no such thing. Have you ever seen a victorious soldier? You come by about beat up and injured. It's not depressed. He just won the battle. When you're a winner in life and you do good, you find good in yourself. You can't be depressed. This kills depression. Okay. Then Rabbi Nava says, Every person we know acknowledges that the particular problems, the particular heartbreak, and because of this, they fall down, but no. Those that fall down, they look at things they need to improve. They fall down. I'm never going to be good. I'm never going to be smart. I'm never going to be talented. I'm never going to be. I hear this from people all the time. Oh, I've got financial difficulties. The guy says he's never going to make money. No, who says? Tip, turn it right on tomorrow. You look at your talents. You look at that. You know why? You know why you're not going to make money? Who wants to buy for a salesman? I'm no good. No, you put on, you put a smile, you smile at everybody and, and you're charismatic and you feel good about yourself. And then you're going to be rolling in sales. You're going to be rolling in commissions. Everything will be, it'll be fine. So Rabbi Nachman says, even if you see something, look at the good point. Okay, it's not that, look, don't look. This is what the classic adage that you don't look at the half of the cup that's empty. Look at the half of the cup that's full. And this is focusing on the good point. Look at the half of the cup that's full. Okay. So a person has to internalize this teaching very much. So suppose that a person falls down because he really did something wrong. The guy's been trying to guard his eyes and he went out in the street and he's in this Piccadilly circus and he sees all these little uh, twiggies and in and, and, and the beginning of June and miniskirts and oh, he, he, he goes crazy, he starts looking. He hadn't done that. Come on, wait a second. So now the guy falls into depression. I'm no good. All my hard work. Get down that. No, nincompoop. That's the answer. Okay. How many girls did you not look at today? 58. How many girls did you look at today? Four. Oh, that's a pretty good record. That's a pretty good record. You'd be, if it were boxing, you'd be a champion. That you defeated your opponent 58 times and you lost four times. That is pretty good. Not many people have a win-loss record like that. Okay, so then, but the Yates says, because the four, you're terrible. Okay, so we work a little bit harder. <laughs> this is the Yatesir. You've got a win column of 58 and a loss column of four, and he says, you're a loser. You're a winner, tremendous winner, the exact opposite. Okay, this is the same thing. And, and women, oh, they're terrible. They're terrible the way they down themselves. This one is, looks better than me. This one has a nicer home than me. This one's a better decorator than me. This one's got more chance. Forget about it. You don't see what's going on. You don't see what's behind closed doors. Look at your good points. Look at your good points. The, 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 look at the beautiful home you have. And you've got the, the look at your own good. So the Rebbe Nachman says, don't forget this. Because the evil Kadesh is trying to knock you down. Chas v'sholem, if he knocks you down, he doesn't want you to get up. Rabbi Nach says right here, anytime you fall down, it is a product. It's an action of the evil inclination. Rabbi Nachman said about himself, I've said this more than once. He said about himself, the holy Rabbi Nachman, he says, if I would sin, the worst sin in the Torah, I wouldn't fall down. I'd just go talk to Hashem, I'd confess, I'd do tshuva and keep on going. Rabbi Nachman tells us his advice is three words. Keep on trucking. Just keep on going. Keep on going. That's it. Get up. Don't stop. Don't stop. Last week, I gave the example. What the Melitz Rebbe gives an example of two soldiers in war. Two soldiers in war, and they're carrying a rifle, and both get hit in the right arm. So the first soldier starts crying, oh, my, my arm, my arm, I'm hit. And he drops his rifle. Well, the second bullet is right between the eyes. He's finished. The second soldier, no, he doesn't cry. He said, I can still got one good arm. So he transfers the rifle to the second arm and he fires and he attacks it 
He, he charges the enemy installation and he overcomes them. He wins the war, comes back, to, comes back victorious. So even if we get knocked down, we don't get up. We, we, we don't we stay knocked down. We get right back up. And as King Solomon says, King Solomon says, a tzaddik, a righteous person gets knocked down seven times, but he always gets up. That's the difference between a righteous person and somebody who's not righteous. Okay. So by getting up and even after we've been knocked down, we come back to look at our good points that this makes us happy. Okay. And now we look forward to salvation where Shem helps us completely leave the bad. Now we're fighting the war, but Shem is eventually going to help us. And as soon as a person says, Shem, I'm not there yet, but you got to help me. Right then, the gate is open for him to sing, to pray, to talk to Hashem, to thank Hashem. Okay, so we now go in, uh, I don't know which Likote Moran you're following in, but this is a small letter Gimel, the third section of Torah 282. Vida. Once again, I explained that in the first lesson, the Da, Rabbi Nachman is telling us a spiritual truth, axiomatic. Rabbi Nachman is saying, who is qualified to be the cantor, to pray in front of a congregation? He says, to be a qualified cantor, to pray for the congregation, because the cantor is, is the representative, what we call in Hebrew, the chazan. He's the representative of the congregation. And he represents, he's praying for the congregation. The congregation is quiet while he's praying. And there's certain portions of prayer where they, they join in. Rabbi Nachman says, because it used to be in Rabbi Nachman's time, there were opera singers that had no uh, no fear of Hashem, but they had nice voices and they were hired as cantors, but the, the, their, their hearts were far away from Hashem. Rabbi Nachman says, no, to be a chazan, a person has to be able to look for the good points in every one of the congregation. You're praying in behalf of the congregation. You have to find even somebody that people are down on and people say, oh, this guy, is, he's a transgressor. He's a sinner. He's a, no, you find the good points in him. Find the good points. And a person who can find the good points within himself or herself and within everyone else, this is a person that could be a representative of the, the congregation. He could be the chazan. Why? Because while he's praying and while he knows Moshe's good points and David's good points and this one's good points, he brings together their good points and he makes their notes and he's making now a public melody. And this is a melody. This is really a powerful melody because that's why he said there's no such thing as public prayer that comes back unanswered. So they're bringing up public and this particular chazan, this particular cantor knows the good points of everyone. He is creating a beautiful public melody that is going up from this particular congregation right upstairs. And Rabbi Nachman says, well, who's the one that can create melodies? He says, for you to create melodies, you have to be able to judge every person fairly. Afilu even the, the lightweights and the, the sinners, and look for the good of them too. Rabbi Nachman says, He makes an attempt. It's not natural. Oh, you know, I just see the good. No, I'm looking for what, What's this person? This person, people are down on him. People say, It looks good. No, he doesn't do this, doesn't that. Then you look at him. And then you look at the corner of your eye and listen to the way he, he sees Psalms on the side and he sees it. He's fervent or, or something. See, he, he did something. I saw last week in synagogue a guy that people people are are down on him. Okay, but what what he did? He came before everyone else came. He didn't know I was in the synagogue. I was sitting in my little corner, and he went and he straightened out the Rebbe's chair and the Rebbe's this and and cleaned it up and this and that. Nobody knew it. Then he went back to his. Son. This guy secretly with no attention, uh, he straightened out. He they, they tidied up the, the the rabbi's corner and he could find a good point. Hey, this guy is special. Because he does things behind the back. He doesn't do things for, for ad, to advertise himself. He doesn't think for, for public things. People, they, they, they're down on him. But this guy's really the opposite. We see, this is what the Gemara tells in Tractate Baba Basra, page 10a. El yonim lemata, tachtonu lemala. There's going to be big surprises upstairs. We get there. The people that were downtrodden, people that other people disdained, they were on a high spiritual level. And sometimes people that everybody thought was on a high spiritual level, the highbrows, they have nothing. 
They are nothing. They're arrogant. So here, say we always look. We make an effort to look. Where's the person's good points? Where's the person's good points? And do this, especially for someone you don't like. If there's someone you don't like and someone you feel some type of animosity, say, wait a second, I'm going to look for good points. You know what happens? As soon as you start looking for the good points, you're uplifting that other person and that other person automatically begins to like you. Okay, you don't have to flatter him like this, this, this. No, look for the person's good points and then you, you get it right back. And this is because uh, that person's soul will mirror your soul. Your soul is looking for the good points. So you're looking for the perfume in that person and not for the stench in that person. By looking at a bad person, we make a spiritual stench and it, it, it gets attached to us also. By looking for the good points, we look for the good aroma of a person. Reach nichoach, the Torah calls it. And, and it's aromatic to Hashem, and this also gets attached to us. So a person that looks for the good points in other people, this is the person that can create melodies. And and the righteous person that holds on this level, that looks for the good in everyone, he could be a representative of the congregation, he could be the chazan, he could pray for them. Because he has a characteristic, says Rabbi Nachman, that every single public representative and every single chazan and shul must have. If you have a public representative, he's got to be able to find the good in every person. And otherwise, it can't represent the public. Now, he's not going to won't be able to represent the public upstairs. Maybe be a politician down here. But Rabbi Nachman is talking about a worthy public representative. So what happens in the good points that the righteous person finds in other people, they come back and cling to him and that melody sticks, that melody doesn't leave that person. So the person gets not only his own melody, but he gets enhanced melody by virtue of all the good points he's looking for other people. So imagine, what is this? Okay, imagine that you play a beautiful violin, beautiful violin, and you look for the good points in someone else. What's that other person that you look in the good points with piano? Okay, maybe uh, people talk there, they didn't like the way he, he plays, he, he plays hard rock or plays jazz, but you look at the good points. Okay, now by looking at the good points, all of a sudden the guy's going to be able to play Beethoven or be able to play uh, a, a beautiful Niguni. And then you look at the good points at somebody else. The other person is a clarinet. You look at the good points at somebody else. And the other person is a viola. You look at the person at somebody else on the drum. So all these good points come back at you. And rather you being your lone instrument, all of a sudden you are creating a symphonic orchestra. You're creating a, a, a whole ensemble. And it's unbelievable. And the impression it makes in heaven, it's unbelievable. Where's this beautiful music coming from? Oh, it's coming from from down on earth. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, Dr. Kim. She's finding the good in people. Menachem finding the good people. All the guy did the people. She's got a whole symphony orchestra. Rena Bartel, she said that the whole symphony orchestra. Okay, Sue Ryder, who did this? What she's she's beautifying the whole UK. But you can see one by one, one by one, one by one. When you look at other people's good points, you yourself are not just creating your own melody, but you're creating. A symphony is that you're, that you're a philharmonic. You can put a one person philharmonic by looking at the good points in other people. By Rabbi Nachman says, make an effort to find the good points in other people. You become a one person philharmonic orchestra in heaven. It's unbelievable. And if you could hear the melody that that makes, every one of us, we drop everything we do and just spend our whole lives looking for the good points in other people. And would uplift them, and this would this would correct them. It'd be tikkun olam, correct the world, and bring Mashiach, because this is something that every leader must have. This is a thing. This is something Rabbi Nachman was talking about. Rabbi Nachman had this quality. Rabbi Nachman find the good in everyone. Uh, King David had this quality. Moses had this quality. This all our, our great leaders. They all had this quality. Okay, the Baal Shem Tov had this quality. Keshu kol nekudot tovot tevi melav that all the good people, all the good points of other people, they cling to this spiritual leader. Afidu Poshe Yisrael, because he could find the good points in everyone, even in the big sinners. He could take the big sinners and find their good points. Okay, we now went to 
uh, small letter Dalid and 282 part four. The da, again, Rebbe says, Rebbe Nachman says da. I've never seen, there's no Torah I know where Rebbe Nachman says this word, you should know, you should know, you should know. Because you see what he could say uh, on every single paragraph, you should know. But Rebbe Nachman is trash, his home. The, I said with the da, the da, would, this is an indication of da means you should know. It's from da'at, knowledge. And turn the letters around, ad, it's forever. This is eternal knowledge. And I mentioned the first lesson on a mezuzah, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, Shema, the ayin of the Shema is written four times bigger. And the dalad of Echad is written four times bigger than the other letters. That's the ayin, dalad, dalad, ayin. That's ad and da. This right here. This is an indication of what Rabbi Nachman is telling us. That in every generation, Rabbi Nachman is now telling us, in every generation, there's a Moses. There's a Moses that he is the loyal shepherd for where the flocks were Shem's flocks. And this loyal shepherd is, is capable of creating the temple. We could see uh, in the previous generation, it was the Lubavitch Rebbe. Lubavitch Rebbe could find the good in everyone. And then even people, people that thought he was Mashiach, they, they had good basis to believe. According to Rabbi Nachman, he, he could have been because he was, he brought so many people close, close to Hashem. Okay, so, but uh, the generation wasn't worth it. And, and Rabbi Nachman left this generation. But Rabbi Nachman is telling us that every generation, and every generation, we may not know, know who it is, uh, but there, there is a worthy tzaddik. And Rabbi Nachman says another time, Veda, and you should know something else. From the holy temple, the sanctuary that the tzaddik creates from all the good points, which the Levites sing, okay, this from this heavenly saying, the, the, the tzaddik that can find the good points of other people creates a sanctuary. Now, Rabbi Nachman says that the innocent children, the kids, we start teaching our kids uh, the ABCs, Aleph Beit, and, and I'll say when they're three years, when they're three years old. When they're four years, they're reading. When they're five years, they're already learning Chumash. We teach them at a very, very young age to read and keep them away from screens and keep their heads in books. This is where our, our kids are educated. Okay, so these kids are very innocent. They're very innocent. And Rabbi Nachman says that these kids grow spiritually by listening to the breath of the mouth of such a tzaddik, okay? Because when a little child begins to learn, he starts when he's, when he's five years old and he starts learning Torah, we start from Vayikra, okay, from Leviticus. And in the very first word in Leviticus, Vayikra, the last Aleph, it's written tiny Aleph, okay? This is talking about an indication of building the Holy Temple. And that's why Hashem, but Aleph is, is, is Hashem's name. And what does it mean, uh, Aleph, alufosh l'alam, that uh, Hashem is the, the leader of the world? And why does Hashem take that Aleph and make it tiny? Hashem is showing us that we make a sanctuary in this world. So we don't have a sanctuary or holy temple, but meanwhile, our hearts are a sanctuary. Vasuli mikdash v'shachanti betocham, the Torah says, create a sanctuary for me and I will dwell within you, plural. What do you mean within you? One sanctuary, no. As long as we don't have the Holy Temple, we should make everyone, even after we have the Holy Temple, our, all our hearts should be a worthy sanctuary for Hashem. To say, how does Hashem, the whole universe and the spiritual the entire worlds can't, can, 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 can't contain Hashem. But Hashem constricts himself, contracts himself to dwell in our hearts, to dwell in the sanctuary. Okay, so Rabbi Nachman says that every righteous person in generation can be a righteous shepherd. Because all the righteous people in the generation, they have an aspect of Moses. It's not just one person. There could be, you can have a number of tzaddikim that are worthwhile Moseses. All right, so that's why you don't ever say that, oh, my Rebbe is better than this Rebbe and this Rebbe is better than my Rebbe. No, this Rebbe, the Vishen Rebbe is a Moses, the Ger Rebbe is a Moses, the Sloan Rebbe is a Moses. The head of the yeshivas is a Moses. The head rabbi is a Moses. They're, they're all. Each one has his own flock. A shepherd with his own flock. Everyone according to his own spiritual status. 
makes a sanctuary. That the babies, now with the babies indication of us, we're all like spiritual babies when we learn from our teachers, our spiritual guides, our ribbies. Okay. So we're babies. We get a particular avenue to hear from this person. Now, when you know that there's some people, okay, look, you can look, there's plenty of people to hear lessons from and plenty of people to go. And I know that when I listen to the Melitzer Rebbe, what the Melitzer Rebbe does, it goes right into my heart. And people are amazed that some of them as kids said, Lazy, you did to tell what the Rebbe said 28 years ago. So sure, it goes and it sticks with me. You can see where your gate is, where your gate is. When you see someone that that, that person's words, it goes into your heart. It makes you feel good about yourself. It makes you feel good about Hashem. And then, okay, that you're a sheep in that person's flock. And then what you'll go is eventually you'll be your own shepherd and you have your own sheep. This is what goes that, that a, a rabbi makes a student, a student has his students and this is their students. And we do this enough we bring the whole world close to Hashem. This is what we want to do. So every every tzaddik has its own flock. And that's what what the the uh, Gemara tells in the tractate Shabbat, page 33. So if there are no righteous, if the, the, the children don't have access, this righteous tzaddik then they're in physical and spiritual danger. Sometimes you see why innocent children die. This is why Rabbi Nachman says this is why innocent children died because they, they didn't have an, an access to the shepherd. It's like a, sh a little lamb that the shepherd didn't see the lamb walk out into the, into the forest and the lamb got attacked from a wolf. Now, these are some very deep, that needs, they can't take everything at, at face value. There's deep, deep, deep secrets. Just on this one particular concept, we could talk a long time. Okay, so Rabbi Nachman now concludes. Okay, so now he has an opposite question. How does every tzaddik know which baby souls are connected to him? But that knows his responsibility for each one. In other words, how does a spiritual guide know who his pupils are? He says, if that particular tzaddik, that particular spiritual guide, if he knows how to find the good in every single person that comes in contact with him, in other words, he go, he knows his students, he knows who's by name, he knows his students, and their good points, and the weak points, he doesn't talk about the weak points, he delves on their good points to strengthen them that they overcome the weak points. So if he can make a melody out of his students, then that, that, that the students connected to him. Sometimes you, you see a person and you just can't see they're good, this and that. There's a sign that you're not the proper teacher for that person. You can't see. Okay, maybe you, there's a lot of teachers around. Uh, my brother, my sister, find yourself another teacher. And this is a secret that the Mishnah tells us. That the chazan, this is a play on words. The chazan is also the cantor and a chazan is also a Rebbe that teaches children and a cheder. So he's supposed to see where every one of the children is, is holding, where every one of the children at his level of learning, every one of the children. And the chazan, Rebbe Nachman says, that is a person that knows how to know digunim. He knows how to make, this is the best Rebbe. The vision of Rebbe says, he has one main criterion who could be a Rebbe in the vision of cheder. I know my, my grandchildren, some of my grandchildren, and I should learn the vision of cheder. It's such a wonderful cheder, wonderful, why? because the teachers love the kids so much. This is the vision of the Rebbe's first criterion. If you cannot love every child in that class, then go be a plumber, be a carpenter, drive a cab, you can't be a teacher. To be a teacher and the vision of the you have to love every child. This is a, a command of the Rebbe, he won't hold others. This is just what Rebbe Nachman is saying right here. Okay, so he sees where every one of the children are holding. That is like the rabbi sees every one of where his students are holding, and therefore he can give them advice because he knows that this advice is too high for them, this advice is too low for them, this advice, he knows exactly who they are, he understands them and connected. So that way he could take their good points, show the person their good points, they can make a melody for themselves, make a melody together. And with this, we can make a melody to purify the whole world, purify our souls, 
and bring us Mashiach. Speed in our days. Amen.